Hello, hello everyone. Flark here with another battle video. So, we are going to be going up against our third round here in the Sinister Cup. Uh, we are the second pairing, so I'm getting high up in the ranks here, getting some pretty scary competition. Uh, I'm 2-0, so hopefully we can take this one in the next game and uh, take first place. That'd be cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's also treat this as a learning experience because it is unranked. So, um, using this Empoleon team that I am not uh, entirely settled on, I uh, already switched Empoleon out on future iterations of the team, but I'm stuck with this one in the past. So, let's make the best of it. Uh, really, the question I have to ask is, do I want to use Empoleon? It's a niche pick. It sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. Uh, it's pretty good against Claydol. I think it can Womp a Haunter if it shields all the charge moves, like one charge move. Um, it does beat Mawile, which is one of the few things it does do, um, although barely. And, um, yeah, I think the... Yeah, it just loses to everything else. Medicham and Polyrath just kind of kicks its butt. So, um... Haunter is a liability versus Mawile. Uh, Marowak is probably, eh, I don't know. Doesn't doesn't feel the greatest. Um, so I don't really have a great fighter. The Polyrath would be ideal against Mawile, but I don't have a Polyrath. So I think the opponent is going to bring it. So I don't think I can rely on Haunter. I'll probably need a Marowak. Uh, I think a Bastidon can... Hurt Mawile but lose in the two shields, but maybe I'm okay with that. And then, um, uh, still choosing. So yeah, I think overall um, a little tricky. Uh, we're we're seeing a lack of Steelix, which is pretty interesting, um, and also a lack of Marowak. So a lack of a lack of meta Pokemon. The Haunter is scary as always, as Haunter is. Um, but I don't think I need to run the meta champ. I think Bastiodon is a pretty good a pretty good solution for this. Um, and honestly, I might just run the Empoleon. So I kind of like something like this. Um, starting Empoleon may be the way to do it. And the Bastiodon, see, they're probably going to start with Fighter. They could do double Fighter Dusclops, and I'll be pretty sad about that. I, I'm not going to lie. So there's really, I think I just run the Haunter anyways. Um, at least game one, which locks the opponent into a Mawile lineup, right? So basically what I'm going to do here is, huh. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just basically throw in the Haunter. Okay, uh, I think I may need to accept another challenge. Um, there it goes. Item bag is full. Nice. And uh, let's just get that team loaded up one more time. Okay, and uh, Bastion or Steelix real quick. Um, I think Bastion looks good. Okay. Cool. So, uh, so we got it. Ready to rock. So, here the concept is... Ugh, there's so many messages. And if I turn on Do Not Disturb, it won't do anything. It won't stop them. I, I don't know if anyone has an Android and knows how to fix this, but... It's just ridiculous, y'all! There's just so many things! Okay. So, I'm just gonna go for the kill on this Polyrath. Uh, it is a Shadow Punch bait with a... Huh. If this is an ice punch, then I'm sad. And okay, I shielded right at the last moment. I decided I wanted to stop that. Um, I feel like maybe there's a chance they don't shield, and that would be awesome. Okay, they did shield. All right. Huh. I could. Shield again. Force the Shadow Punch out. Uh, this will get me switch priority, and then Bastiodon can kind of help me come back from that against one of their ghosts. So that's kind of the plan here. 
So that's why we we spent the shields. Also, they're gonna have a hard time getting rid of Haunter unless it's Mawal. Yeah, see the. Oh, okay. No, he did die to Hex. Interesting. Um, usually Haunter can farm up against a Hex user uh, and get off another charge move, but um, I was a little too low on that. So here we go. So this is just Dust. Oh, it's faint attack Dustclops. That's why Haunter had some problems. So we're just gonna switch to Marowak. Pretty much whatever the opponent does here, we're just gonna switch. Because that's just, like, Bastion has such a good matchup versus Dusclops, and almost everything else versus Dusclops is, like, Dusclops is good against most things. So, the trick here is, um, wow, it's amazing that no one will shut up. So, um, there we go. Got it. And there's the Shadow Ball. All right, got it. So, uh, I think we got this game in the bag, y'all. Uh, it was very close that Psychic was going to take me out, and Bastidon was going to feed to this Metacham and totally die and be useless. So, uh, we got it. Bastidon comes through in the clutch. Very cool. So, uh, my point, uh, before I was bombarded with three trillion messages, was that uh, mostly um, Bastidon... Or most of the... T so, basically, Dusclops is just really decent against most of the meta and the really the heart the thing that dustclops really sucks against is bastion like look I, I don't even need to like i'm just kind of gonna i'm gonna go for like a demoralization play um by just kind of smacking this dustclops down with fast moves because i'm not at threat to die to a charge move um, the reason I'm doing this, yeah, part of it's demoralization and part of it's I've never, I literally never faced a faint attack Dusclops and I'm trying to gauge how quickly this thing ga uh, generates energy. So I'm using this to kind of hang out and track my opponent's energy gain. So I appreciate that my opponent is throwing charge moves as opposed to just, uh, you know, kind of pressing the fast move button until he dies. So very cool. Um, very useful information. I try and get as much information as I can out of my matches, just as a kind of a... And I try and give as little information as I can. But, um, yeah, anyways, the the reason... I had two choices when Bastiodon came out. Obviously, it was a favorable matchup. I was going to be able to make that shield back. The only thing I had to worry about is what can my opponent switch into, and will I be able to deal with it? If I switch into that Metacham a little bit later, like if I kind of hesitated on that switch, then Metacham would have got double psychic. I would have lost the game. So... The play there was to predetermine, like to preordain that I want Bastiodon versus Dustclops so much so that I'm willing to throw Marowak into anything, even if it's like the worst possible matchup, because I I just have to have the Bastiodon against the Dustclops. That's that's the ideal world. So um, once you can kind of operate around those ideal conditions you can make snap decisions a little bit better. So, um, and uh, yeah, I, I was still a little slow to switch into the Metacham, but I would have been even slower calculating that had I not thought about it in advance. So yeah, um, okay. So we took game one, very cool. Um, the opponent had faint attack Dusclops. Man, so a dark fast move and Mawile probably running bite. So very lethal against my psychics. Uh, it would be nice to have a Polyrath, y'all. Like, that would be... <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I anticipate a Claydol could come out as a response to Bastiodon Haunter. Um, also, um, it kind of does some things against Marowak. I feel... I feel Polyrath is still going to stick around. Polyrath's pretty good against most of my team here. And so I need a way to deal with Polyrath. I think I think Metacham may be a little less worried about Dusclops when it's faint attack. It generates lower energy and still does neutral damage. Um, whereas Hex is super effective. So I don't exactly know how the matchups play out, but I feel like it's a little better. And um, Steelix actually kind of looks better I think versus Dusclops because of the lower energy generation. So I may flex over into a Steelix, also anticipating a Claydol. Mm -hmm. So we're going to lead Steelix, keep the Marowak because he's a baller, 
and maybe just toss the Haunter out. See, my opponent has Confusion users and Bite users, but my opponent may not be able to respond to just how quickly my, um, my Haunter comes out. The only... Like, when I switch Haunter in, I'll get a couple Shadow Claws before my opponent can, like, throw in something really strong. So I'll at least get to a Shadow Ball, probably. The thing is, who do I lead? Marowak or Steelix? I think Steelix is the more flexible uh, pick, and it can threaten a Polyrath on a switch in. So I sort of like this. So we're going to try it. And we're going to hope that we catch a Clay Doll... Uh, clean, like basically not a Polyrath. Okay, yeah, Metacham. This was what we want. Like we wanted to catch a Metacham. That's pretty cool. So uh, we know opponent is running. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the um, the Shadow Punch. It doesn't do that much damage. And then we're gonna switch in the Steelix. Um, this, I feel like the opponent threw that. Like based on me farming. The Dusclops last time, you know, like I was, like I sort of got a feel for its uh, energy timing last time because I, I refused to charge move it. And so I felt like the opponent had very little residual energy. And when I switch a Steelix in, I don't think there's going to be enough fast punch, or <laughs> I don't think there's going to be enough fire punches uh, for me to really be worried about this, uh, this matchup. Normally Steelix has to be pretty worried about this. So yeah, my opponent is just kind of not shielding, which is great. I get to farm down this Dust Clops. I'm going to get pretty low from the Fire Punch, and then I'm going to have an Earthquake ready for whatever. I'm going to throw it at Metacham. I'm going to throw it at whatever the other Pokemon is. I don't really care. So um, yeah, so we'll just press this Earthquake button. The reason we are spamming uh, is because we're so low, and Metacham can actually probably just kill us with a counter. So we we sort of have to... We kind of, okay. That was, that was interesting from the opponent. So rather than throw in the Metacham, uh, they tossed in the Claydol. Now Claydol, um, Claydol, <laughs> I actually probably could have, yeah, I could have double crunched the Claydol, which in hindsight would have been cool, but I don't think the right play was to wait and see if Claydol comes out because of, uh, because if the, Hold on just a sec. I'm trying to think here. But yeah, if, if the clay doll comes out... Oh, wow. My Haunter is going to have a field day with this Metacham. This is great. Um, I think Haunter can kill this in one Shadow Claw and not even get hit with a Confusion, which is pretty cool. Um, but I am just... Oh, I should, probably should have shielded because... Well, whatever. Come on, Haunter. Yeah. All right. No, so this is a free game. This is just a completely free win. I double shield literally anything from this Metacham. Don't care. Um, and just go double uh, Shadow Punch and the Metacham dies. So, uh, GG's. So, yeah, my point, uh, my point with that is sometimes it's a consideration, like, do I throw, do I throw a charge move right away? Or do I, um, like, do I spam the charge move right away? Or will I, do I think I will have time to wait and see what my opponent's Pokemon is and then throw the correct charge move. Because a lot of times people make that mistake. They're spamming the move and you come in and it's the wrong move. But I think there, I didn't have the luxury to wait against that Metacham. I think it was a one counter kill. Um, and so I wanted to get the Earthquake off rather than a potential double crunch, which um, would have been better against Claydol. Um, so yeah, that was great. I got the Shadow Ball hit. Um, I think my opponent thought that was probably a Bone Club bait because my opponent, uh, or rather, I think my opponent was hoping I would Bone Club bait and then block the next Shadow Ball and then kill that Pokemon and then kill my next one because my opponent had to get through two shields. So they sort of needed to make up that deficiency somehow by like through virtue of me baiting incorrectly and missing the missing the bait. And I think um, rather than me choosing the bait, I just went straight Shadow Ball and I was just gonna double Shadow Ball that. I was gonna shield uh, that Marowak uh, a billion times to get two Shadow Balls and then finish with Haunter. So that was, uh, I think either way I had that one in the bag, but that was my game to lose. 
And had I baited there and the opponent didn't shield, yeah, I think uh, it's close. I may have lost it. So I think that was the absolute correct play from my opponent to uh, um, to not block the shadow ball. Some people might look at that and say, wow, he didn't block the shadow ball. Like, what a dumb move. And I think, no, uh, I think that's the only way my opponent wins there is if I mess that up. Um, which has nothing to do with my opponent. Like, nothing, like I'm absolutely not saying that my... Uh, my opponent, you know, was like not able to beat me or something like that. I'm just saying in that circumstance, that seemed like a pretty unwinnable game. And you should recognize that and try to take more risks. I still remember the time uh, Ramberto took me in a Seattle uh, tournament by, um, like he came out from wherever, I think LA or something. And uh, he had a toga kiss. And I totally had him in a favorable matchup, and it was Twilight. And uh, he double shielded that Togekiss so he could spam Ancient Power, hopefully get the buff. And then he won, he beat all three of my guys with Togekiss and the buff um, from Charm. So that was just one of those plays where he knew he was screwed. He assumed, like, he figured out what I probably had in the back. He knew he was screwed. And he just was like, all right, I'm putting all my eggs into the 10% chance on getting a boost and uh, winning the game, hopefully. And he did, and he won. So, you know, props to that. A lot of players would not have done that. They would have just done the standard plays and slowly lost the game. So, very cool. Um, for this third round, we can kind of mix it up, go a little crazy. But uh, honestly, I just love Haunter so much, and I'm going to stay very far away from Empoleon. Every time I bring him out, it doesn't work. So, we're going to go Haunter... Bastiodon. Mm. Marowak seems still pretty good against this team, to be honest. Still strong. All right, let's do it. And uh, I'm going to lead with Haunter, and if it's a reasonably favorable lead, I am going to double shield and try and get switch advantage. Okay, oh god. Um... I am, <laughs> that's a bite. That's a biter. We got a biter. So that's probably a fighting Pokemon, and yeah, I'm pretty screwed. I probably should have switched in the Marowak, to be perfectly honest, but um, I didn't. I think the Marowak was kind of a safer switch, knowing the opponent probably had a Polyrath, and Polyrath completely farms Bastiodon. All of his charge moves are not effective. Um, the reason I didn't throw Stone Edge right there right away is because I wanted the opponent to rush to a dynamic punch and not farm up anymore. So, uh, so that my opponent can be like, yeah, I took Bastiodon's energy. Like I, you know, I, I, I took his energy down. That's really helpful. That's really good. Um, I, I wanted that to occur. Um, so that my opponent doesn't farm up more. My opponent, however, did farm up more. And I'm just going to shield all these ice punches and probably die. So, yep. Hmm. Actually, I, I might be able to threaten this Mawile pretty well. Um, let me see if I can try another play here. I'm going to faint down with Shadow Claws. And then switch in a Marowak instantly. Okay, there we go. Got the Marowak in. It hurts, but it's okay. We're gonna Bone Club. Power of Punch does like no damage. It increases the uh, whatever that stuff is though. Um, the damage of the stupid uh, bite ability. Um, but yeah, I think Bone Club here should hurt. Uh, Fire Spin should hurt. And then I'm not sure what's in the back, but we're gonna hope that uh, we can get it. Okay, it's a Dust Gloss, very interesting. All right, we're gonna just chuck the th shadow ball out, and we're gonna hope that this dust clops just gets blown up by this. Uh, so the trickiest part about this, okay, the dust clops did shield. So the trickiest part about this is I have uh, a full energy haunter, I believe, and I need to shadow ball this thing immediately before I take any hex damage or faint attack damage. And then I need to shadow punch the Mawile and hope that it freaking dies. So here we go. This is a powered up Mawile. Come on, Hunter. Come on, Hunter. Come on, Hunter. Come on. Okay. So it was close. I didn't have a fully powered up Hunter. My mistake there, 
I think I played it pretty well. I think overall that was a pretty strong uh, showing uh, there of like trying to win a really bad situation. The problem I made, the mistake I made, was I didn't count how many moves I did on Haunter. I thought I had close to 100 energy. I thought I farmed quite a bit and I didn't um, because uh, Shadow Ball is 55 energy. Uh, Shadow Punch is 35, so together that is 80, uh, 90. So um, I didn't even need to be at 100 energy, I needed to be at 90, and I was closer to like 70 something. So I was like three Shadow Claws away from uh, the Shadow Punch. But ideally, a Shadow Ball, boom, and then I Shadow Punch um, for, I believe that would be enough for the win. So. Uh, my mistake there was not knowing that I uh, had less than that energy. And what I should have done is just attack the Dusclops a couple more times. Because would I rather get hit by faint attack from Dusclops, which is, it's an okay damaging move, or a powered up bite from Mawile. Let's, let's think about which one does more damage to Squishy Old Haunter. So yeah, the correct farming target there was absolutely the Dusclops. So... Um, my bad, good learning opportunities. Haunter is ridiculous. And I, uh, I was very scared of Mawile and super glad my opponent only brought it in game three. So I'm gonna go check in on the Discord, make sure that those games were okay with my opponent. Usually if they say GG's, then I can report it and there's no disputes. So GG's. Very well played uh, for my opponent. I think had my opponent brought Mawile more, then I think I would have been in huge trouble. I would have had a lot of really, really difficult situations. So um, I'm glad that didn't happen, and I have confidence my opponent would have crushed me if, uh, if they brought my, my well all three games. I, I would have had a really hard time negotiating that. So um, yeah, very cool. Uh, thanks for tuning in, checking out the video. Uh, hit all the YouTube buttons if you want, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.